But I walked into a sanctuary. And last I checked, the word says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And so if you can inhale and exhale, you ought to praise God with everything in your might. Amen. I thank God today. I thank God today for the privilege of being here. I thank God for my right hand being with me. Little T, wave your hand, little T. Just wave your hand. Don't be afraid. Amen. All right. My right hand with me today, so we good to go. Amen. The book of Joshua. The book of Joshua chapter 14. The book of Joshua chapter 14. I felt one message in my spirit, but the Lord just kind of wouldn't let me leave this one. And so I want to go to Joshua chapter 14. Can y'all help me preach tonight? Uh, uh, y'all help me, help me. I, the thing that I do is a call and response at my church. Like whenever I ask the church to say amen, you say, amen. When the church say praise the Lord. Praise but there's a thing I ask. It's, it's one of my signature catchphrases. Can I push it? Y'all got to say push it. So I'm going to do a test run. Can I push it? All right, y'all help me push today. Help me push. All right. Joshua chapter 14, beginning at verse number 6, and hear ye the word of God. Then the people of Judah came to Joshua at Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite said to him, You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God in Kadesh Barnea, concerning you and me. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in my heart. But my brothers who went with me made the heart of the people met, yet I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the Lord on which your, the land on which your foot has trotted shall be an inheritance for you and your children forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive. One day, Black Baptist is going to shout off of reading the Bible. Let me say that one more time. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive. Just as he said these 45 years since the time that the Lord spoke this word to Moses. And while Israel walked in the wilderness, and now, behold, I am this day 85 years old. I am still strong today as I was in the day that Moses sent me. My strength is now as my strength was dear for war and for going and coming. So now give me this hill country of which the Lord spoke on that day. For you heard on that day how the Anakim were there with great fortified cities. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall drive them out just as the Lord said. Then Joshua blessed him and he gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, for an inheritance. And therefore Hebron became the inheritance of Caleb. The son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, to this day, because he wholly followed the Lord, the God of Israel. Let me recapitulate verse number 12. So now give me this hill country of which the Lord spoke on that day. You may be seated in the presence of our good and gracious God. The grass do withers and the flowers do fall, but the word of our God do stand forever. So now give me this hill country. I want to talk this this evening from these words of preaching on today. Go get it. Go get it. Do me a favor. Look at your neighbor. Smile at them. Don't scare them. If you got the mask on or don't have it on, look at them and just say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. The pastor going to preach about. Go get it. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise for his work. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. The tenacity of an athlete is one that is determined, destined, and decisive about going to get what they work hard to accomplish. They've trained themselves, disciplined themselves, and made up within their minds that they're going to go hard in the paint and go after it. All of us exemplify some characteristics of a go-getter. One who is someone who will accomplish an objective in the face of impossible and discouraging obstacles. Many people who declare that they are a go-getter are not a go-getter. 
because they have settled for being stuck, procrastinated on many plans, led themselves to be lazy, and have fallen into a cesspool called failure. They have said what they're going to do, but as a dear friend would say, words without action is meaningless. You have to have a determination within your faith walk and future to get up and go. You cannot allow obstacles to hinder our opportunities or pitiful circumstances to cause painful challenges. It's up to you to get up and go. When we get up and go, we will discover that what God has for us, it is for us. And you will discover that when you get up and go, what the Lord desires for you to have, you will discover that the trajectory of your situation will change. Because when you go and get it, opposition will turn into opportunities. Breakups will turn into breakthrough. Burdens will turn into blessing. Calamity will turn into calmness. Pain will turn into prosperity. Destruction will turn into destiny. And gloom will turn into grace. You got to be determined to get up and get it. Because faith without works is dead. You cannot allow the past people, places, and things to confine you to a halt, hinder, and hurt you from going to get it. You got to be persistent and press on so that the circumstances will not hinder you from receiving all that God has for you. And as we walk into this text, we are introduced to a Judaite by the name of Caleb. And Caleb is the son of Jephunneh. He is one of the original spies who scoped out the promised land. He was a man who walked in integrity and talked with tenacity. While others saw obstacles, he saw an opportunity. While others saw giants, he saw God. He was determined not to see things as they did, but to see things as God did. And may I tell you, my brothers and my sisters, that if you're going to go and get it, you cannot allow what they said or what they did to get into your spirit. You got to be determined to follow God, and you got to do it just like Malcolm X would say, by any means necessary. And if you're going to go get it, you got to be determined that as the Bible said that Joshua and Caleb went to the promised land. Here's the sermon in one sentence that I want to give unto you today that when you are faithful to God, God will reward you of your faithfulness. You just missed it. That when you are faithful to God, that God will reward you for your faithfulness. So if you want to go get it, you got to do these three things. And I promise you, I'm going to raise up out of here. Can I push it, y'all? Let me push, let me push, let me push. If you're going to go get it, you got to first and foremost acknowledge your path. You got to acknowledge your path. Watch this. While they are at Gilgal, Caleb recalls to Joshua what the Lord had said about himself. And Joshua, after the two of them, had returned from exploring the land. He reminded them of what Moses said on God's behalf. He reviews, recalls, reflects, and takes a retrospective look at what has happened. And in his reflection, he recalls how he was one of the 12 spies that went to scope and scout out the promised land. Ten spies came back with fruit and gave a bad report. Told the people that there were giants in the land that were bigger. But when Caleb made his report, he did not magnify the giants. He magnified God. Y'all mission, y'all shout you up in here. That when Caleb made his report, he didn't magnify the giants he magnified God he does not get discouraged he does not get scared because he wholly follow what God said and I don't know about you while they reported something face and something false and something foolish and something alternative Caleb was faithful and he spoke 
woke up he was not afraid but he had a share and may I tell somebody up in here don't get caught up in somebody else's foolishness just remain faithful because every godly report will always lead to a godly reward I wish I had myself a witness in here that know that when you're faithful to God and you're following God you're not gonna report like they would say you're gonna report like you with say and see when you're faithful you can be fruitful because not just for the here and now but for the not yet because because of Caleb's faithfulness Moses blessed him with land and he was able to go in the promised land you know it reminds me about, about our Jewish brothers and sisters they would leave an inheritance and they would leave it to the children of their children. They would leave law firms, jewelry stores, businesses, and other corporations to their children's children. Because they believe that blessings are not just for the here and now, but they're also for the not yet. And whenever someone in our family dies or leave the scene, they have left us with a legacy. And a charter to be faithful and fruitful for the future. And if they could leave something to us, the greatest thing I thank God that they left us was God Himself. Lord have mercy. But but but, but can I push it? But not only must you understand that you got to acknowledge your past, but you got to secondly anticipate the promise. Let the church say anticipate the promise. Watch this, Caleb was confident of God's faithfulness and now 45 years later he wants to claim what was promised to him and as he converses with Joshua he began to testify that 40 years at the age of 85 years old that the Lord has kept him alive uh, let me go here Pull your Bibles out. Go back with me to verse 10. Verse 10 said, And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive. Somebody in here ought to turn up on a Thursday night. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive. You just missed your shout cue. That somebody ought to testify that the reason that I'm still here is not because of my education. Not because of my mama, my daddy, or my grandma, or my grandfather. But I am still here because the Lord has kept me alive. And somebody in here ought to testify that it was the Lord that kept you alive. Car accident, but the Lord kept you alive. Lost your job or lost your loved one, but the Lord has kept you alive. Car got repossessed, but the Lord kept you alive. Bad prognosis but the Lord kept you alive got put out of the house but the Lord kept you alive put out the job but God kept you alive abusive and toxic relationship but God kept you alive is there anybody up in here in friendship on the night that could thank God that God have kept you alive and because you got a pulse that lets you know you got purpose. Because you got breath in your body. That lets you know that you are still fearfully and wonderfully made. Hey, I thank God that he kept me from some stuff. But is there anybody here that could thank God? He's kept you. He kept your mind when you thought you were going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. You thank God that he kept you when you had that one night stand and you thought you was going to get a disease or pregnant, but God kept you anyway. Somebody in here ought to thank God and he kept you alive. And so Caleb testifies that the Lord has kept him just as he said. Watch this. When the Lord makes a promise to you, he going to keep just what he said. That's why the Bible said, for God is not the son of man that he should lie. Nor is he the son of man that he should repent. Because if the Lord has said it, that's good enough and a guarantee he got my back. But watch this. Here's some shouting. Although 
He's in his latter years. This is the shout. Caleb still got some fight in him. Woo, God Almighty. That although he's older in years, he still got some fight in him. Because he realized that if I'm going to get what God has promised, I still got to fight for it. He got a, uh, oh Lord have mercy, he got a Miss Celia anointing on him. A mess, as a matter of fact, got a Miss Sophia anointing on him. That all these years, I got to fight. And all these years, he got to fight. Why? Because he's not giving up on his purpose. Why? He's not quitting on the promise. He saw the mountain before he stepped foot on it. Woo, I, one, one, Lord have mercy. I wish somebody would just have a Baptist fit up in here because I just said something that would have made you shout right there. He stepped in the, he saw the mountain before he stepped foot on the mountain. All right, y'all don't get it. Let me go on this side and see if y'all might get it. He saw the mountain before he stepped foot on the mountain. Yeah, I think y'all got it. Let me go on this side. He saw the mountain before he stepped foot on the mountain. Y'all got it. Let me go on this side. He saw the mountain before he stepped foot on the mountain. Let me come up here. He saw the mountain before he stepped foot on the mountain. Sometimes you got to see some things before you step foot in some things. Sometimes you got to see the new job before you get the job. Sometimes you got to see the marriage before you get booed up and get in the marriage. Sometimes you got to see the new house before you put the key in the lock and you all up in the door. Is there anybody that can testify? I got to see some things before I step into something. I got to see the diploma before I get the degree. And I got to see the promotion before I get the retirement. I got to see the hill before I step in the killing. Is there anybody up in here that can thank God? I see what the Lord has said to me and I'm going to step. Woo. Woo. But can I push it one last time? I'm putting some of y'all to sleep. But can I push it? You got to go get it. Requires you to acknowledge your past. Let the church say acknowledge your past. You got to anticipate. Church, they anticipate the promise. But here's the last thing, and I'm true. If you don't have nothing else to shout off of, this, this is it. This is it. This is it. This is it. And I'm true. I promise you, I'm going to raise up out and I'm true. The Bible says this and teaches us this lesson that when you go get it, you will be awarded with prosperity. Woo! Because the Bible says, I'm gonna let me put it in the text right quick. Verse 13 says, Then Joshua blessed him. You missed your shout. Then Joshua blessed him. One last time for Peanut Gallery. Then Joshua blessed him. And see, after all these years of being faithful to God, Caleb receives. What God promised. And see victory and reward. Doesn't come easily. It doesn't come quickly. But when you persevere. And you keep on pressing through. You could be just like what it says in the text. Then Joshua. Blessed him. He didn't have to drive. Anybody out. Because Joshua. Already did. And may I tell somebody tonight. Some fights, you will have to fight. Some fights, you won't have to fight. But if you follow God, you'll get what he promised. I, I feel good. Let me say that one more time. Some fights, you will have to fight. Some fights, you will not have to fight. But in the end, you'll get what God promised. And I don't know about you, you could begin to testify that whatever it is, it was worth the wait. Because you've been faithful over a few things. The Lord has made you ruler over many. Is there anyone here that could testify that you're ready to go and get what the Lord has promised to you? 
That's why you can say, like the hymn writer said, the Lord has promised good to me. His word, my hope, secure. And so keep on being faithful. Keep on pushing. Keep on driving. Keep on striving. Keep on showing up to work. Keep on showing up to your house. Keep on winning. And wherever he leads you, uh, he will provide. Uh, and he will give you the strength that you need. Uh, he will give you joy. He will help you smile again. Uh, and he will give you hope. Uh, you ought to look at your neighbor uh, and say, neighbor, go get it. Uh, go get your peace. Uh, go get your joy. Go get your health. Uh, go get your smile. Go get your job. Go get your man. Go get your woman. Go get your degree. Go get your salary. Go get your marriage. Go get your child. And go get your blessing. Because whatever you need from the Lord, you ought to go and get it. I don't know about you, but there have been some things that I've been praying for. There's been some some things that I'm hoping for. There are some things that I'm expecting God to do. And all I'm going to tell y'all to do is just ask the Lord to say, Lord, help me to go get it. Help me to go get what you promised me. Go get it. That new, that newness in my life is there anybody in here they gotta go get an anointing in here they say come hell or high water I'm gonna go I'm gonna go I'm gonna go and get it and the reason why I can go get it is because he's a way out of no way bread when I get hungry my water when I got thirsty he's a rock in a weary land uh, shelter in the time of a storm uh, Moses would say uh, he's a pillar of cloud by day uh, and a pillar of fire by night uh, Job would say uh, he's a raw house pouring in the valley uh, David would say uh, he's a battle axe uh, in the time of a battle and Jeremiah would say uh, he like fire fire ah! Shut up in my bones. But I thank God. He's a promise keeper. He's a miracle worker. He's a light in the darkness. But the good thing I could tell y'all is one Friday on a hill called Calvary. My Lord and my Savior, he died for you and for me. Matthew said he died. Mark said he died. Luke said he died. John said he died. Paul said he died. Pastor Robert Sellers said he died. The man right here said he died. And Pastor KJ said he died. But that's not how the story. In. They placed him in Joseph of Arimathea's tomb, and he stayed there all day and night Friday. He stayed there all day and night Saturday, but he got up all right, all right, all right. One Sunday morning, uh, took off a dying shroud, uh, and he stepped out uh, on a resurrected ground uh, with all oh, power, all oh, power, all oh, power. And with that same power, you could get off your blessed assurance uh, and go and get uh, what the Lord has promised you. So may I ask y'all a question, and I'm going to go to my seat. But want to make a way for you? Want to? I'm, yeah, I'm, let me ask that again. Want to make a way for you? Let me ask that one more time. Want to make a way for you? Want to open doors for you? Want to provide for you? Want to heal your body? Want to be a joy inside? If you're glad about it, you ought to let it head back one good time.
time. Put your hands in the air. Wave them chocolate hands and say yes. Say yes. 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 So do me one last favor and I'm done. Just put your arm around the person that you're closest by and say, neighbor, neighbor. Go, and go and get it. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Go, get it. go get it. And the reason why, come on, say it with me. The reason why you can go and get it is because the Lord will take care of you. That's why the hear writer say, be not dismayed. Whatever betide you, God will take care of you. If you got sickness in your body, he will take care of you. If you got a family member sick or struggling, he will take care of them. If you got problems on your job, he will take care of you. If you can't pass in school and you're going through problems in your education, he will take care of you. So won't he do it? Won't he do it? I'm getting happy all by myself. Won't he do it? Say yes. Yes. Say yes. Yes. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? I don't know about you, but I, be, I feel revived tonight. Anybody feel revived up here tonight? I'm going to get my blessing. I don't know what y'all going to do. I don't know what y'all going to do over there. I'm going to get my blessing. And when I get my blessing, I don't want to hear no after here after. I don't hear no murmuring. I don't want to hear no talking about it. I don't want to say, look at the pastor. I'm going to go get my blessing amen i'm going to get my blessing I'm going to get my blessing amen amen i got to fight on i'm gonna fight on and get my blessing the lord ain't brought me this far not to get my blessing y'all don't hear me tonight the lord ain't brought me this far not to get my blessing amen somebody preach on reverend kevin anthony amen preach on doc going to get my blessing. Sister Johnson, I'm going to get my blessing. They're going to make some haters, but I'm going to get my blessing in the house. Amen. I'm going to wear my blessing. I'm going to spend my blessing. I'm going to try my blessing. I'm going to live in my blessing. And I'm going to be good to God folk in my blessing. Because when God been good to you, you ought to be, you ought to be a blessing to somebody else. Am I right? Amen. God bless you. <laughs>